Good morning and welcome to AM Excellence 53, Truth or Truth. It is 6.45 on Monday morning. I appreciate you being with me a little bit later than today. On Monday mornings, I conduct a group call from 5 to 6. Then I had to read and uh, just, you know, going with the flow of everything. I couldn't find my Kindle, so I had to find another way to read, and I had to bring it up on my Mac and read that way. But we got it done. Scott, good to see you, buddy. But we got it done. And uh, I was very fortunate yesterday. I went down to D.C. to run the Army 10 Miler. I was invited to go down as a guest and run. And it was an awesome experience. And I'll be posting about it in my blog and my pictures here in a bit. But the title of today, AM Excellence 53, is Truth or Truth. That cold, hard thing that no nobody wants to face, that none of us want to look at because it makes us uncomfortable. And the book I'm reading is Relentless, From Good to Great to Unstoppable. And the, the author is talking about these cleaners, cleaners being the, the highest performers out of anyone on the earth, really, guys like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. So a lot of what he's teaching, a lot of what he's talking about, it's certainly applicable to our lives. And even me being a former professional athlete, even still some of the concepts I look at and think, all right, well, let's add some texture to it. Let's kind of break it down a little bit more. And one of the things he talks about is this. He says, cleaners have this in common. At some point, they learned they could only trust themselves. Maybe it was a lesson they learned in childhood or from something that happened later in life, but for, but it forced them to rely on the sheer power of their gut instinct. So that's something that, like I said, it's it's uh, we're not Michael Jordan. We're not Kobe Bryant. So we can't just say, hey, I'm only going to trust my gut. I'm not going to listen to anything else because... Frankly, none of us, unless you are Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, in which case, if you're watching this video, please let me know. None of us have earned that right to trust our gut that much where we only listen to ourselves. I ran into that problem a few times in my career, towards the end of my career, which may or may not be over, I don't know, where I, I kind of felt like, no, I know. But really, I hadn't earned that right yet, and, and I was wrong, and I don't have a problem admitting that I'm wrong. But what it's saying, where we can adapt that into our lives is don't trust everybody. Create a small circle, a small circle of people around you that you can trust, that you rely on. One of the things that I ran into a problem when I started transitioning from fighting to really building a speaking career was I would ask everyone for their opinion. I, I, I honestly would ask 20 people for their, for their opinion and I would get eight or nine different options. And that created indecision. So create that small circle, one, two, three people that you really trust and you know, hey, these people have the same vision. They share my vision, they understand my vision, and they can point me in the right direction. So what we're taking from this, we're not trusting nobody, but trust that very few close circle of people around you or else your mind is going to be going in a thousand different directions. So again, touching on this thing called truth. Jeff, welcome. Touching on this thing called truth, Tim Grover says this. He's talking about the idea of being honest with people and telling them the truth even when they don't want to hear it because everyone's looking, well, I'll just read from the book. He says, but the, bo the boss doesn't always need to be happy. Sometimes he needs an honest smack in the head. You want to be the most valuable guy in the circle? Be the one who looks the cleaner straight in the eye and tells him what everyone else is afraid to say. He might hate it and hate you for saying it, but a true cleaner knows when he's getting BS'd or when he's being set straight. This is one of the most important things. So the group I talked about that we just had that, that call this morning from five to six, the power of that group is that we're honest with each other and we tell each other, hey, you said you were working on this goal and you didn't. So what do you have to say for yourself in that respect? So what that does is that puts you in the hot seat around your peers, around the people that you care about, you know, people who are working towards a similar goal as you, and it keeps you in front of that truth. And as a friend, as a colleague, as a parent, as a brother or sister, I believe it's our obligation. If you share this vision, you know, of, of this next level of performance, of someday being a cleaner, then it's our responsibility to be honest with people, to tell them, you know, in a very... Uh, in a very diplomatic way, I would highly recommend reading How to Win Friends and Influence People to learn how to interact with people. But be that person who tells people the truth because then they look at you as an asset. I don't look at my friends. I don't look at my circle 
of as as being yes people or yeah that's a great idea that's why i love my wife so much she keeps me in front of that and she'll tell me no you're you're saying one thing on camera but you're living another thing at home and that makes me say holy cow you're right and that's that's a valuable person in your life so find those people surround yourself with those people because they're going to keep you honest and another thing he talks about that I thought this was really neat, and this is a problem with me. I, I like to do a lot of things. I like to help people. I like to, to I just, I like action. I like doing stuff. And he talks about this idea of getting too wrapped up in the things you're doing to create this, this uh, never ending cycle. And one of the, the people that's on this call right now, you know, we talked about, or, watching this video right now, we talked about that. You can you can yes yourself into complete overwhelmingness, if that's a word, overwhelmness. And he says this, when the answer is no, a cleaner says no. He doesn't soften it or wrap it up in something pretty. No excuses and no explanation afterward. Explanations are another way of saying, I wasn't sure but then I, when I thought this through, long thought press until I came to a decision, and now I'm pretty sure. It's opening, it's opening yourself up to explanation when you don't need explanation. A great example of this is from the movie Moneyball. Jonah, it's an awesome scene. Brad Pitt, Jonah Hill is extremely uh, nervous about uh, releasing one of the players or telling him he's been traded, he's off the team. It's a professional baseball team. And Brad Pitt says, no, you just walk in there, you sit down and say... I'm sorry, you've been released. You have a day to clean out your locker. And it's this really neat scene where you see Jonah Hill putting this into practice, again, in a very diplomatic way. He's not rude about it. He's not a jerk about it. Read How to Win Friends and Influence People. Please read that book. But it's an example of just saying no, cutting the cord. Um, a lot of times in, in just small talk, you'll talk yourself into these responsibilities and then before you know it, you're, you're so overwhelmed with stuff. One of the things I pride myself on is eliminating that stuff so you can really focus on what you need and what you want to be focused on. And here's the last thing that I want to throw at you dealing with the truth. Man, there's so many more viewers at 652 than there are at 552, but oh well, that's the, uh, I'll roll with that. I'll figure that out here in the future. But he says this, he says, most of the time when we ask for advice, we don't want the truth. We want the answer we're seeking. Be open to advice that goes against what you want. Think about that. Most of the time when we ask for advice, we don't want the truth. All of us are sitting in the car, in the bathroom, whatever, getting ready for a day about to attack our day. Think of that. As you're doing whatever you're doing, how many of us really want the truth? Hey, you know what? You're really not eating the right things to get to the weight that you want to do. You're not putting in the work to get the promotion you want to get. Hey, you say that you're a great father, but really you're not because you're on your phone the entire time that you're in the living room with your kids. So those things, I talk a lot about uncomfortability and growth. Those things are the things that nobody wants to hear. Hey, do you think I'm being a good father? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. No, I don't. Nobody wants to hear that because it's uncomfortable. But if you're watching this video, if you've watched the last 52 videos, you do want to get over that. You do want the truth. And the truth is that 99.9% .9 of us don't want the truth. There's one option. Seek the truth. And he says this, cleaner law. And this is the last thought I'll leave you with. Cleaner law. Surround yourself with those who want you to succeed who recognize what it takes to be successful. People who don't pursue their own dreams probably won't encourage you to pursue your. People who don't pursue their own dreams probably won't encourage you to pursue yours. They'll tell you every negative thing they tell themselves. My fifth element of excellence, surround yourself with the best. Surround yourself with the best. Surround yourself with like-minded people. Why I appreciate that call from five to six every Monday morning, yeah, it's super early, but it's people who are on the same mission and path that I am. So as you go out today, look for the truth. Here's a great exercise for you. Pick one person you're extremely close to. Do this, I would love to hear the results. Pick one person you're extremely close to and ask them through an email, through a conversation, could you do me a favor? Could you tell me three things I'm really good at 
and three things that I'm not really good at, three things that I'm bad at, three personality traits that I'm lacking. Do that. Stand in front of the truth. It's uncomfortable. I love it. <laughs> I think it's really fun. Do that activity with you today. Seek out the truth. So thank you for tuning in. It's now 6.55. I will be back tomorrow morning at 5.30, although we probably won't have as many viewers. That's okay. I encourage you all, you know, go that extra mile. Stay in front of it. Wake up. It's the truth. It'll help you. Get up a little bit earlier and tune in. To get all these videos, because Facebook is, you know, their algorithms or whatever that means, sometimes you get the videos, sometimes you don't. I encourage you all to visit charlie-brenneman.com. Sign up for any of the email, <clears throat> any of the email invites there. And every Friday, I'll email all of these videos, every podcast episode and description, as well as every blog to your inbox. I won't inundate you with annoying emails. Thank you, Kathy. I won't inundate you with annoying emails. I'll only send you good stuff, two, three emails throughout the week, but every single one on a Friday is gonna have all of my content from that week. So don't miss one of these videos. Don't miss a podcast episode. And remember, this Thursday at Fighters Mindset, the Spaniard Podcast is our first interview episode. Can't tell you who it is, but I can tell you he's big time. Have a great day, guys. Seek the truth, carpe diem, and fight well.